Hi, welcome to IEA Stores. Namaste. In this edition, I'm going to talk about the Consumer Protection Act 1986 and some of the amendments suggested. Now, the cabinet is yet to take uh, this proposal. There would be some changes through cabinet and then the parliament will pass it. Uh, now, I talk about the uh, 1986 Act. It talks about the six rights of the consumers. And those six rights are, number one is right to safety, number two is right to be informed, number three is right to choose, you have right of choice, and number fourth is right to be heard. When they say that right to be heard, it means that if you are using any product or services, you have right to inform that company that you are not satisfied from that product or service. Let's say you are using uh, fairness cream. So uh, look at the fairness cream and you will find some consumer number, helpline number or any number 1800 or something uh, number would be given. Uh, you can you can you can call them and inform them that there is a problem with the product. I'm not satisfied and all that. Then the sixth, fifth right was right to redressal. Now the last act, uh, you may be knowing that you may approach, you can approach the court. In India, there would be the three-tier system uh, in which you can complain against the service or uh, goods provider. And uh, there would be district court, consumer courts, there would be uh, consumer courts. And the sixth right was the uh, education, awareness. So you had right to be aware of the things, aware of the uh, products. It seems that the last act was robust in itself, but there is one thing was missing here. Uh, number one is the right to better environment, and number two is the strong regulator. A strong regulator was missing because you you talk about all these act, and in all these acts you have the choice. Look at the safety or the or the uh, information and, and everything. You see here. As a consumer, you will have to approach the court or the company. There is no body, no agency which is there to take care of the consumer's suomoto at their own. Now, this has been remedied in the recent suggestions. Here, there would be a national regulator. National regulator. And the name of this national regulator would be Consumer Protection Agency, National Regulator, I say, Consumer Protection Agency, CPA. Now, this CPA would be headed by a commissioner. This would be headed by a commissioner. Now, this commissioner would have five deputy commissioners, five deputy commissioners. Let's say DC1, DC2, DC3, DC4, and DC5. This would be laid down in the act itself this would become a law now the first deputy commissioner would be dedicatedly working for the safety second dc would work for the misleading advertisement uh, this person would would this person along with the institutional mechanism will look in, into the misleading advertisement you you see uh, each day in the newspapers on tv that you uh, apply this fairness cream and uh, uh, 24 hour challenge, 7 day challenge and then uh, grow plus capsule and then uh, what not all these uh, uh, these advertisements. So this commissioner would look into the advertisements. Then third deputy commissioner would look into the standards. There are standards suggested for each and every kind of product through various bodies, through various acts, let's say drugs and cosmetics act, let's say uh, uh, Codex Alimentarius for the export to US. So th there are various bodies. There there is a mechanism through which you can you can check whether a product is complying with the standards prescribed. Fourth one would look into the contracts, contracts terms and conditions T and Cs. Now you see there are uh, uh, statements given in the contract with the consumer, and then there is a asterisk. Uh, asterisk mark and then you find out that th that was a dubious claim 
and uh, when you drag anyone any company into the court uh, you are surely going to lose the argument because uh, they had mentioned some terms and conditions dubious terms and conditions so this deputy commissioner would look into that and fourth would be related to the enforcement without enforcement any law is useless so this in enforcement you may be knowing the 86 act is already having the enforcement that is the three tier adjudication system three tier adjudication system means there is a district court in the state level and uh, the national level in addition to it there would be a system of mediation so that the court's time can be reduced if you are agreeing to have the mediator outside court mediator yes this this uh, act allows you for the me mediator and then uh, apart from this if the claimed amount is less than 2 lakh rupees less than 2 lakh then then you don't have to you will not be represented by the lawyer lawyer cannot represent you to make the things uh, uh, very simple and easy simple and easy you can represent yourself to the court is it's it's already been there so these are the uh, uh, mechanisms suggested in uh, the new law and it seems that this law will be able to protect the consumers in the changed scenario because there is some kind of proactiveness incorporated in the act itself proactiveness had been incorporated in the institution which is going to be the outcome of this act that's what I hope that this will a way for better consumer rights in India. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can subscribe. Uh, you can like our Facebook page if you do. Facebook.com slash IAS TOS. IAS dot T O W S. You can also uh, join us on Twitter. You can uh, download some of the material from our Facebook group. Uh, groups. Uh, Facebook slash groups slash S O C A S P. Alright, thank you. Uh, bye bye. Have a nice time.